Welcome to a brand new edition of Making India a New Deal for Defence. This week we take a look at a company that's not only helping enhance India's defence capabilities but also establishing India's dominance in space exploration. 118 years old, Goldridge and Boyce has evolved from making locks to giving India a lock on the planet Mars. Involved in 15 diverse businesses from precision engineering to precision machining and tooling, Goldridge and Boyce is one of the first private sector companies in India, but its growth has been propelled to new heights as the Indian Space Research Program spread its wings. As its presence in space and aerospace grew, the company has put its expertise and skills to make its indelible stamp on two more closely related areas, India's indigenous missile program and India's civilian nuclear program. CNBC TV 18 Sajit Mangar travelled to Piro Shanakar on the outskirts of Mumbai to get you a first-hand look at the capabilities of this media-shy company. As you enter Vikroli in Mumbai, the structure that catches your eye is this Godrej facility. It sprawls over 3,500 acres which include 2,000 mangroves and has been classified as an eco-zone. This eco-zone classification itself is just 20 years old. While the Godrej group has stood guard over this land for over a century, Godrej and Boyce, the holding company of the Godrej group, started its journey by manufacturing high-quality locks in 1897. Today, it has 15 diverse business divisions offering consumer, office and industrial products and services. Along the way, some 30 odd years ago, this locksmith decided to help India unlock the mysteries of space. It's interesting. Uh, you know, it was more in response to a national call. Uh, uh, ISRO invited Godrej, uh, you know, very impressed with the kind of work that we were doing and uh, invited us to join the national cause and invited us to uh, to start making precision components for ISRO. Uh, that was in 1985 and uh, such, you know, that was the uh, how we started with uh, working for ISRO. Unlocking the secrets of space exploration gave Gorjic the key to a whole new arena, defense manufacturing. Over a period of time, we, uh, we acquired capabilities, acquired technology, infrastructure, built, uh, you know, plants and so on and so forth. And uh, then there was a natural, uh, uh, you know, course to also serve the defense uh, industry because both industries require similar uh, capabilities. Today, Godrej and Boyce has five industrial licenses to manufacture defense products. But back in 1985, the company realized that cementing and sustaining a strong position in defense and space would mean heavy investment for building technologies, for enhancing capabilities, for putting in place cutting-edge infrastructure, and more importantly, getting specialized manpower on board. I'll put a ballpark figure of, uh, you know, for defense, uh, I could say nearly about 300 crores worth of investment in plant machinery, uh, development of technology, and, um, and, you know, building capabilities. Space, I would add uh, another 100 crores or so. This investment, of course, does not include the money spent to make its Vikroli facility one dedicated to fulfilling its defense ambitions and moving some of its customer-facing businesses to other facilities outside Mumbai. But the first nudge to enter space and defense did not come from the company itself. Godrej is known for the sheet metal and the precision machining facilities. But we never ventured into the high technology area like Indian Space Program or Defense Research Development Organization. And uh, 1985, when the ISRO was almost ready with their research and ready to productionize their satellite and launch vehicle programs, they started approaching Indian industries. And then Godrej uh, was identified for the liquid engines. ISRO gave the company a further nudge when after asking the company to participate in the Indian space program, it pumped in a cool 100 crore rupees into Godrej's facilities. This money went into bringing in new technologies and equipment equipment that Godrej is using to this day to develop engines for ISRO. Godrej Aerospace, the full credit I will give it to Indian Space Program because they identified the hidden strength within the Godrej uh, various uh, divisions and uh, they gave us opportunity to really work on those high-end alloys and very precision uh, tolerances and moved us uh, from a detailed part to even uh, the, the assemblies as the complete engine for Vikas engine and then the cryogenic engine. Today we have three different variants of cryogenic engine which are made by us 
one of the largest booster semi cryo 200 tons is also being developed by us now could it spend the next 4 years that's 1985 to 1989 working on ensuring that it could deliver on its promise to provide high precision detailed parts to the indian space program the first major contract we signed for the vikas engine which is a french technology and uh, we made the first uh, second stage uh, liquid engine wholly uh, uh, in india and that was for the gslvs and the pslv yes it's used in second stage of pslv and gslv and now we have two different variants for gslv uh, first stage booster and uh, the gslv mark 3 once again uh, first core engine the going has not been easy for godrej it has had to continually match its rose pace of development and ambition but godrej has proven to be up to the task becoming one of the key suppliers of liquid engines for india space program godrej has supplied isro with over 100 engines so far and the journey is far from over one of the first feathers in the company's cap came in 1994 that's when it delivered its first liquid propulsion engine to isro for ground testing Four years later, with the successful launch of the first PSLV, Godrej had officially arrived. By then, ISRO was ready to take space research to the next level, and Godrej was embroiled in a race to design and manufacture cryogenic engine. At the time, India was trying to acquire cryogenic technologies from Russia, but the technology transfer was not complete. Things got a lot more challenging when sanctions were imposed on India for conducting Operation Shakti, popularly known as Pokhran II. So the latest GSLV liftoff is only the second to carry an indigenous cryogenic engine made at Godrej's facilities. 96 we signed the first contract for the cryogenic engine and that engine was delivered in 2002 for the ground test. But uh, I mean once again the technology transfer was not complete so I had lot of learnings and then we developed it along with ISRO lots of uh, new variants and modifications in that so that it became a testable and now just recently we had the second successful flight also over the years godrej has supplied numerous engines for isro's pslv and gslv liftoffs but the crowning glory for the company is its association with the successful mom or mars orbital mission godrej supplied the second and fourth stage engines for the mangalyaan it also supplied isro with the orbital thrusters and deep space antenna for this mission Now as Godrej cemented its association with space research it has also cemented its presence in the field of defense manufacturing It was very exciting because we actually were already doing work for space research and uh, therefore you know uh, there was a new set of customers which needed the similar capabilities so we were very good at it in fact uh, even from the customers point of view i think the first experience would have been very good because here in us we had uh, they had a, a vendor or a partner who could actually you know understand their requirements and uh, and execute them well the big boost in this regard came from former president apj abdul kalam but much before he became president as he steered india's missile program kalam decided to tap the potential in india's private sector long before the government even considered it when the dr kalam moved from isro to the defense research development organization and he coined that igmt5 missile program so he started contributing to the riveted structures and then into the tankages and then into the engines so for the prithvi missile which uses a liquid engine we have made uh, quite a large i mean more than 60 liquid engines we made at uh, our facilities here the contributions to the prithvi missile was just to start from drdo uh, first we started with a program called glp5 uh, which was for making prithvi engines and uh, followed by uh, the work that we did for brahmos and uh, that's where we are doing the airframes for brahmos and we are in a serial production mode now today godrej is targeting revenues of 280 crore rupees over the next 3 years from the space segment alone and it may not be a far fetched target after all its established expertise in space technology has already led godrej to contribute to the international tmt project that's the 30 meter telescope project which will be based out of hawaii in which india has a 10% stake Space it's widely considered to be the final frontier but for Godrej space is just a stepping stone after this short break we tell you how Godrej and Boyce is pitching to become the tier one supplier for global OEMs in the aerospace segment and also its capabilities in manufacturing the Brahmos missile system stay on with us